Hi everybody, this is Dr. Eliana Aaron, Director of EMA Care. Today I'm going to be talking about using public transportation versus taxis. Hi, this is Dr. Eliana Aaron. Before I begin, we are hosting a Zoom conference this Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for parents of Israel Gap Year students who have pre-existing medical conditions. The topics we're going to cover include adapting medical care during the pandemic, prescription medication issues in the age of, again, the pandemic, gaining confidence in your child's treatment plan, proactive measures parents can take, and emotional and physical care of specific common issues. Pre-registration is required. You can find the link in the description below. If you have any questions, you could email efrat at healthcareisrael.com. We look forward to seeing you there. So uh, basically a lot of people are starting to think about how is my child going to safely be able to take public transportation? Should everybody be using taxis this year? And these are all really good questions. And I hope that I can help address some of those questions today. So let's first talk about taxis because frankly, that's a lot easier. Do I need to wear a mask and gloves when I go in a taxi? Um, the correct way to go in a taxi and the safest way to go in a taxi is to be in the back seat diagonally from the driver if you're by yourself or with another person in your capsule or you can have a few people that are in your capsule or family. Okay, so depending on if you're in a capsule or family, you're allowed to be in the car with them, um, but they don't want people who are from mixed families to be together except for maybe one other individual who you're not sitting next to. So uh, all the windows of the taxi or private vehicle should be open. They don't have to be this much open, but they do have to be a little bit open to allow for fresh air to circulate. And you know, if you only open one side of the, um, like if you just open the window next to you, but not another one, there won't be any crosswind. So it is important to open that. If you're in a taxi, you can ask him to open up some of the windows. Now in the winter, this can get a little tricky if it's raining outside, but cracking open the windows is absolutely essential and it is necessary uh, for your safety. It's actually a regulation. So they should be willing and able to open some windows. It doesn't have to be full, but it does have to be, like I said, open to crack. You need to wear a mask and gloves. You absolutely need to wear a mask covering your nose and mouth. The driver should also be covering his nose and his mouth. If not, then you can ask them to. You know, if his mask is here, you can say, excuse me, can you please cover your nose also? Because the nose is a source of uh, contagion and spread from uh, when you're not covering it. Uh, you do not need to have gloves. However, when you are in a taxi and you're touching your seatbelt and you're touching shared surfaces and you're touching the door handle, it's a really good idea to use hand sanitizer. And therefore, you don't need gloves because remember the gloves, are also gonna get contaminated when you touch these surfaces. So it doesn't matter if you're wearing gloves or if you just have your hands. The most important thing is to sanitize your hands um, after you touch these shared surfaces. So when you get in a taxi, you close the door behind you, which means you're touching the door. You click your seatbelts on, you tell them where you wanna go, and, and then you take your hand sanitizer out and you go ahead and you sanitize your hands before you touch your phone. Remember, Almost everybody in a taxi is on their phone, um, you know, or talking to people, whatever you're doing on your phone. Don't touch your phone until you've sanitized your hands. Um, safest place to sit, like I said, diagonal in the back seat um, is the safest place. Um, I do not recommend this year that people use cash for anything that they don't have to. Uh, the reason for this is because in past pandemics, um, money, which is known to be a source of spreading germs, has actually been something that helped to spread germs. So I don't recommend that people uh, do that. I think that uh, using taxis where you could pay by credit card is best. In Israel, that is a get taxi. There is no Uber here. And a get taxi is uh, you can order your taxi. You can open an account with your credit card. You can even leave a tip if you want to, but in Israel, you don't need to leave a tip for a taxi. So that's very important. 
Uh, so I don't love the idea of, of anybody really using uh, cash. Obviously, if you're on the street, you can't order a get taxi. I find personally that when I'm in the old city, you can't get a get taxi. You have to just flag somebody down. And in that case, you do have to pay in cash because uh, there isn't another way to pay them. So in those cases, you do have to have cash. If he gives you change, you can take the change. You could put it with your other change. You have to assume that all money is potentially contaminated. Um, there have been studies that have shown that money has actually um, tested positive for all kinds of lovely bacteria. This is not during a pandemic, um, but you know, I consider money to be dirty, which it is. So um, that's what I recommend. If you go into a store, I'm just gonna uh, sidetrack this for one second. If you go into a store, see I'm using alcohol wipes, okay? And if you go into a store, what you basically are using is your uh, credit card. And after you use your credit card, remember it's going through a machine that's had everyone else's credit card. There are some where you just put it on the screen. I know in America, they've had these for quite a while. In Israel, this is relatively new, so not too many stores have that, where you don't have to give your credit card to anybody else. But if you have to hand your credit card to someone else, or it has to be sl sliding through a machine, I take this and I put it in a separate outside pocket of my pocketbook. And then when I get home, I take all the credit cards that I've used and I go ahead and I just wipe them down, including the edges, okay? And while I'm doing that, I'm trying not to handle the non, this is now clean because I just wiped it, but I try to clean like this and then I can touch the area that I cleaned and then I go ahead and I clean the rest, I let it dry, and then I can put it back um, with my other um, credit cards. And that way the credit cards that, when you're handling them, stay clean, because this is 70% alcohol, so it's going to um, kill any germs that are on there. Um, should we wipe down door handles? Again, you could go crazy wiping down every public surface you ever touch it's not going to be very useful because it's everything and you can't go around cleaning all of Israel. So um, as long as you clean your hands afterwards, and I recommend everyone carry a little bottle of alcohol gel, 70%, and go ahead and use it and make sure you're using it properly, that you're getting between your fingers, that you're getting on top, that you're um, doing it properly and using the correct amount, and make sure it's full, you know, because you run out and say, shoot, I ran out in the middle of the day. So you can handle a door handle um, and then clean your hands. Again, that's just part of life now. Um, now I'm gonna get to bus safety. Um, should you wipe down your Rav cup? Again, anything that belongs in your pocketbook that you are swiping in a machine where other people have swiped their things should be wiped down. And I have an outside pocket in my pocketbook where I put it. So for someone who doesn't have a pocketbook, for a, uh, a student or a, a man who doesn't carry a pocketbook, I wouldn't put it back in my wallet. I'd put it in my pocket, perhaps, until I have a chance to wipe it down. So I think that having a few of these in a small Ziploc bag that's sealed is a good way to just have this and to be able to go ahead and use it so you could immediately return it to your uh, wallet. Um, where's the safest place to sit? So, um, if I need to stand on a bus and I need to hold a handle, is that safe? So it's the same thing as all of these shared surfaces. It, it, assume everything you touch in a public uh, area is potentially contaminated, right? Which means if I'm touching, if I'm holding the handle on top, I don't want, don't be on your phone. You know, in between stops, don't start doing this on your phone because your hand is not clean. So go ahead and do this. And when you are done, and either you get a seat or you get off the bus, you do your alcohol gel, you wipe your hands, and we're done. Okay? So that's what I recommend. Um, it's not safe to be standing on a bus without holding on. The chances of you getting injured on the bus without holding on is much higher even than getting corona on the bus. So please do the safe thing for your physical body. Um, should I get on a crowded bus? So buses are not supposed to be crowded, but of course, it is happening, uh, especially during rush hour. If you find yourself on a bus that was reasonably full, but not crowded, and then it started getting crowded, 
Um, if you're not comfortable, get off the bus. As long as you're in a safe neighborhood, get on the next bus, get on another bus. Sometimes two buses come back to back, especially the popular buses. The first one's crowded, the second one's empty. So don't stay in a in, in, on a bus that's uncomfortable for you. It's not worth it. It's going to stress you out. So don't be afraid to get off. It doesn't cost that much to get on a bus. You have a rough cuff, get off, get on, and don't worry about it. Um, if you're on a bus that you know is between cities where you can't just get off, um, you know that's a little trickier. Um, the safest place to sit on a bus is next to an open window. So the windows now on buses are pretty high, but as long as those windows are open, then there is some good circulation going on, and that's the safest location for people to be. Um, and it also means you're not next to the aisle where people are just sort of brushing by constantly. So that's good. Wearing gloves is generally not helpful unless you know how to wear gloves. So people who choose to wear gloves should not be touching their phones at all, okay? People who wear gloves should be assuming that the gloves are dirty until they take them off and gel their hands, okay? So you could put gloves on, you could touch things, you could open windows, you could, um, you know, hold on to the bar or the bar on top when you're on a, a bus or a train. Very important to keep that in mind, that the gloves are not clean, so you cannot use your phone. You cannot um, assume that you could do anything personal like touch your face or your mask. Um, and that's it. Um, what if I'm sitting next to someone? So people are not supposed to sit right next to each other. There is supposed to be a space between them on either side. If someone sits next to you, say, you know, it's okay, as long as it's not a it's completely crowded bus, in which case, I guess you have a choice to get off. You have to say, slicha, but uh, I'm sorry, but you're not supposed to sit next to people. Um, if it's obviously someone who's older and needs a seat, then you might think about getting up. Um, taxis are definitely safer than buses. I don't think there have been any cases of someone getting corona from a taxi, um, but taxis are very expensive. So this is, you know, uh, something that not everybody's going to be able to do. Um, there are people who are in yeshivas and seminaries that are not close to anything, and they have to get places. Uh, they have to go uh, visit relatives, whatever it is. It's not realistic that you won't take a bus. Um, if you take a train, um, you have to reserve a seat in advance. So keep that in mind as well. I hope everyone has a good day and I hope everyone takes care of themselves.